Shalom. This is Yair W.D. speaking to you from the biblical area of Bethlehem, the present city of Beit Ar, in the state of Israel. And I am now giving you the third edition of J News. J News 3. Giving you news and views from Israel, commentary and updates of what, concerning what is going on now in the news, as well as information about our latest research developments. We research where the Boston tribes are, and we have found them amongst Western nations. Our first entry is a uh, concerns an article. Here's what's really happened in the Gaza war according to the Israelis. We'll give you a few brief excerpts from this article. It's quite interesting. The, the Gaza war Operation Protective Edge lasted 50 days. He, uh, the expert told us that uh, why didn't we see uh, Hamas uh, rocket launchers as we did in past wars. It turns out they were buried under the ground. They, uh, most of the rocket launchers were underground. They, uh, Amos Cadres did not carry around a cannon and light a fire. It was two wars ago. In the current conflict, they buried their launchers and fired by remote control from concealed locations, often hundreds of yards away. Uh, this was, this made it, uh, the locations of these rockets was difficult to determine and also difficult to photograph. During the war, Operation Protective Edge, approximately 2,127 casualties occurred on the Palestinian side. Of those, at least 616 were combatants and terrorist operatives, and the others were somehow either also involved on the, on the Hamas side, giving us at least half, 50% of Hamas and those involved with Hamas amongst those who were killed. It should be mentioned that Hamas uh, did what it could to maximize, to maximize the number of casualties killed. They wanted as many of their own people to be killed as possible in order to arouse sympathy from the world for themselves and to increase their hostility against the Jews and against Israel. That was their, that is their intention, that is what the Hamas Charter says they should do. They exist in order to destroy the state of Israel and to destroy the Jews wherever they are. That is what their Charter says, that they exist to destroy the state of Israel. They do not want to talk, they do not want to compromise. There's no such thing as going back to the 67 border or anything like that. There never was. They want the, the Jews here killed, obliterated, and we should remember this. And so said that, uh, that uh, the, the Hamas also sent a uh, naval force, they sent divers who carried uh, material and equipment and weapons a good a number of miles under the, under the sea, and they were in quite good shape and well trained, but they were killed. And, but apparently they had been trained overseas and they showed a surprising degree of proficiency and professionalism. Even though they failed, we should be warned from this. So we are being helped by God Almighty and if we do not mend our ways, this help will not be indefinite. There were miles and miles of tunnels, Sister Source. There were 32 offensive tunnels dug with the intention of putting Hamas militants under the border fence. Fourteen of the tunnels uh, came across the border, went under the border line. In addition, there were dozens and dozens of kilometres of tunnels under the Gaza Strip. Everywhere there were tunnels and networks of tunnels that allowed them to move to conceal them themselves and so surprise and disappear. It was low tech but effective. The Arabs uh, might seem primitive and stupid from our point of view in their aims and the way they look at the world, but they can be quite intelligent and quite formidable in many ways. We should never underestimate them. They can surprise us. They can surprise anyone. We are being helped by God Almighty in defeating them. The intelligence chief said Hamas and the other factions started the war with more than 10,000 rockets. 
He estimated there are 2,500 or 3,000 rockets left, as well as thousands and thousands of mortars. Most of these were assembled in Gaza. And they were not brought in from outside, they were assembled there. He said that it is not important how many of the rockets were. The intention was to instill terror, to force a million Israelis to run into shelters. That was the intention, and uh, in part they succeeded. Of the 4,500 rockets fired by Hamas and its allies in Gaza, 4,500 rockets were fired at Israel, 4,500. Out of these, 875 fell inside Gaza. Many of those that fell inside Gaza were lobbed at Israeli soldiers who were, had penetrated the Gaza territory. Uh, but others were duds or misfires that landed short, and in some cases the Hamas may have also deliberately wanted to increase the, the number of, of casualties. In other words, the Hamas is suspected of firing at its own people in order to blame it on the Israelis. The item concerns uh, the, the Prime Minister of the UK, of Britain, David Cameron. He said that going after ISIS within Syria can be done. It is legal to do it. We do not need permission from Syrian President Bashar al-Assad. He considers uh, the government of Assad to not be a legitimate one and therefore no permission for him, from him is, is, uh, is needed in order to penetrate his territory. Uh, and uh, ISIS represents a danger to Britain and if Britain sees the need to go into Syria to hit ISIS there, it will do so. It was from uh, Prime Minister David Cameron in Britain warning us and threatening to go into Syria after ISIS. Another item is that permission was given by Jerusalem, the, the uh, city hall by the mayor of Jerusalem gave uh, or announced permission for the building of uh, more than 2,000 units, housing units in uh, eastern Jerusalem for Arabs, for Palestinians and uh, this is quite a large uh, number for Israel by Israeli standards. It should also be remembered that all over Israel there's a very severe housing shortage. There are not enough houses for Jews, especially not in Jerusalem. We should also know that the cost of a house for a Jew in Israel is three times or more what it is for an Arab. And uh, there are several reasons for this, but uh, those who are interested can look into it, but this is the truth. Another point is that the housing shortage for Jews in Israel is caused by a combination of factors, including bureaucracy, which uh, the government has not tackled properly, also ineptitude in certain quarters, but they don't know what they're doing, or they don't want to know what they're doing, they don't want to do anything, and also corruption. There are certain elements apparently amongst the moneyed people in Israel who want the house or the price of housing to increase in order to line their own pocket and they do not care how much the ordinary citizen suffers because of it. In our previous J, J News number two, we had an item saying that the Vladimir Putin of Russia had threatened the West with a nuclear warfare. Correspondent Clifford Riley from Britain notes that um, if it goes to nuclear war, we'd have a nuclear winter. The debris thrown into the atmosphere will prevent sunlight for 200 years, killing all surface life. Russia is doing this because it wants to return to the Cold War. When people lived in fear, when the Cold War ended, we in the West discovered that the Russian people were always one step away from starvation. That is true. We remember when the Jews from Russia came in the 1980s in large numbers, they were hungry. They were hungry for food. There was not enough food in Russia. Another item concerns the independent region of Kurdistan and northern Syria. The population of this area has increased from 5.4 million to 9.8 million. This is a significant increase. It has in caused a greatly increased burden on the infrastructure, on the services provided, on government mental responsibilities and so on. On the one hand, on the other hand, it is an advantage. It strengthens the Kurdish state.
which could be significant in the future. And most of the refugees in there are Kurds. They are of Kurdish, Kurdish origin, and they uh, have uh, fled from ISIS and from uh, from the other Arabs, Muslim fanatics and uh, people amongst whom they previously dwelt. Another item is that the head of the Palestinian Authority, Abbas, refused an offer to settle refugees in Sinai. This offer was made recently within the last few weeks. It is a repetition of an offer originally made in 1956 by Egypt. In 1956, Egypt had offered to uh, resettle all of the Palestinian refugees from the 1948 war in Sinai. Uh, the, the idea was that the Palestinian Authority would receive a 618 square mile area adjacent to Gaza. The Gaza Strip is 139 square miles. This additional territory would be almost five times that, that area. And uh, this would uh, resolve the entire Palestinian refugee issue. But Abba, so this was first made in 1956, was repeated in the last couple of weeks. Uh, Abba today, or yesterday, uh, revealed it, uh, and revealed that he had rejected it. He had rejected it because he did not consider it proper, and also because he did not think the uh, Palestinian people would accept it. He said the offer is absolutely unacceptable, and the Palestinians will not accept it. Meanwhile, the EU and the USA are funding uh, Palestinian refugees, are uh, Palestinian refugees on the West Bank, so-called refugees. Some of them, many of them, live quite well, and they uh, live as uh, as well as the people, as uh, the, their Arab neighbours. At all events, Arab refugees on the West Bank, in camps, there are also Arab refugees in Jordan. In fact, the majority of the population of Jordan is composed of so-called Palestinian refugees, uh, Palestinian refugees in Lebanon, and in Gaza, and elsewhere. And uh, they are a thorn in the side of Israel, as it was uh, said, that if you do not draw these people out, they will be a thorn in your side, and uh, for barbs in your eyes, because you did not drive them out, it will be done unto you as I thought to do unto them as we told in the Book of Numbers. So this is what is happening because we did not drive the Palestinians altogether out of the country. They are causing us trouble. The prophet Isaiah in 11.14 predicted that Ephraim and Judah together will cause the Palestinians to fly away to the West. We have several articles on this on our website and also we have clips discussing this issue. A new source gives uh, additional insight and uh, even what could be considered evidence concerning the Phoenician and Israelite settlement in the West. As we have explained elsewhere in our books and, uh, and in our publications and in articles on our website and in video clips, originally there were 12 tribes of Israel settled in the land of Israel. They divided into two different sections. The northern section comprised 10 tribes, was taken away by the Assyrians into exile. The Syrians exiled the Israelites uh, to the north, taking them overland, taking most of them overland where they joined up and, and became part of the, the Cimmerians and the Scythians and the Goths, and from there moved into southern Russia and southeast Europe, and from there once again moved to the west. Meanwhile, a portion of the Israelites were also taken overseas, so taken overseas by Phoenicians, Phoenicians and by Philistines. Philistines, who are, in archaeological terms are identified with Minoans from Crete uh, because they uh, shared many aspects of their culture. Even Gaza was known as Minoa because uh, of the linkages between uh, Crete and Gaza. And uh, this is uh, mentioned in the book of Amos. Amos in the first chapter mentions Israelites being taken into exile by Phoenicians from Tyre and also by, Phil by Philistines. And uh, these uh, exiles were taken overseas in ships, as Amos says, as we have explained in the Hebrew. In the Hebrew original, it says they were taken in ships. It describes the type of ships they were taken away in. They were taken away to the area of Tarshish in Spain. Also, they were taken into Britain and into Scandinavia. And uh, so uh, we have uh, numerous proofs about this. 
So an additional source which that we came across is found in a, a, a book by Sir John Lubbock, written in 1865. It is entitled Prehistoric Times, as illustrated by ancient remains and the menace and customs of modern savages. So the, uh, Professor uh, Nielsen is quoted by Sir John Lubbock. Professor Nielsen, apparently a Scandinavian savant, uh, 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 an academic from Scandinavia, is quoted as uh, having shown that in the Bronze Age, a new race of people came to Scandinavia. The, these people had, a, short, uh, had a, a shorter physical structure than those who were already there and from those who were there at present. They were smaller people, as can be seen by the bronze swords that they had with their, with their hilts. The handles of their swords are, are much smaller than uh, could be encompassed by a modern grip. Well, and, uh, there was, and not only that, they had engravings recalling the Phoenicians and Israelites in the, on, as shown in their tumuli, in their megalithic monuments. And on, uh, on wall drawings, they worship Baal, who is a Phoenician god, and the Israelites had also worshipped Baal. The Israelites, as we're told in 2 Kings chapter 17, were exiled, taken into exile as a punishment for worshipping Baal, and they continued to worship Baal in their places of exile. Also, certain methods of reaping, of gathering in produce and fishing, and the use of war chariots recall that of the Middle East, of the Phoenician and Israelite area. And this is significant and should be checked into. Professor Nielsen also recalled the worship of Baal by the new settlers, and this uh, worship was continued in, in uh, until recent times, what is known as the Beltane, the Beltane meaning the fire of Baal, which is also practiced in Ireland and in Britain and in Sweden, and um, it, it, uh, it uh, involved lighting fires and jumping over fires or through fires or through the smoke and bringing animals through the smoke to get their silver blessing, as if to say. It's known as Beltane, meaning the fire of Baal, of Baal. And uh, it was also known as Baldur's Baal in Scandinavia. Baldur's Baal, meaning uh, the, the, the fire of Balda. Balda is another name for Baal. Also, the name Baal, according to Professor Nielsen, was, uh, is uh, found in many Scandinavian names, such as the Baltic, the Baltic Sea, the Great Belt and the Little Belt, Belteburga, Balsvogen, Balastranden, and so on. The Lord God of Israel bless all of you. Thank you.